Hi, me again. Part two. This is a bit uh, didn't fit in the other video. So remember from the interrupt on change, which is the, uh, the interrupt routine above, uh, we were calling it um, capture seven. So this is like case seven. So what we're doing first of all, we're looking at the EEPROM address zero, and we call it whenever it's in zero. We're calling it direction. So direction equals EEPROM read zero. If the direction is 1, if it's equal to 1, we're writing to that address and putting a 0 there. Uh, otherwise, we're writing to that address and putting a 1 there. So, if it equals 1, we're writing a 0. If it doesn't equal a 1, we're writing a 1 there. And then we're clearing the capture, clearing the flag and breaking from that statement. So what we have, every time we press that button, if there's a 1 there, we write a 0, if there's a 0, we write a 1. So it's just like on off switch. Every time we press that button, we're changing the data in the EEPROM address. Uh, and so we've got a 1 or a 0 there. And then, so this is all within the while statement. At the end of the flag statement, we're going to show position, so that's where I'm showing the uh, minutes or seconds on the screen and the counter, and then this is the end of the while statement and the end of the program. Um, so we've got the one and the zero from the capture, and this is our case for two cases, depending on if the direction is one, we go forwards, if the direction is zero, we go backwards. That's how we're doing that. So if I scroll up the screen slowly, so you can capture it all. So there's the interrupt. We're calling it number seven, so that's case seven. Every time we press the button, we're getting a case seven. So there are the two captures as before. Uh, and this is a, if the second Z is greater than or equal to 60, we're uh, zeroing it. If counter one, is greater than or equal to 120. Zero in the counter. Right, byte to string, counter on text. So that's just showing the counter on the screen in like a decimal format. Uh, and as for the minutes or seconds, depending on what you want to call them, where you saw the rotary encoder turning, all I'm doing is if if seconds uh, equals 43, I'm clearing the line before it. So, so if you can see. Hope you can see the we do the one in the middle of the screen. So seconds equals 43. We're writing a line there. Uh, and that's the colour you can see is one. And you see when seconds equals 44, where that, that number there, we're writing the same again, but making it blank so you can't see it. Clearing it effectively and writing the new line. So when we're going forward, it's clearing the previous second or previous minute. But when we're going backwards, it's not clearing it. And I thought I'll just leave it on there for demonstration purposes. So that's how I'm getting into seconds. I haven't got the fancy maths with all the sine, cosine, couldn't work it out on this screen. So they're all the 60 seconds. So show position. You saw down at the bottom, flicks to show position. These are the global variables such as seconds counter, text flag, capture, and that's the bit at the top there, just how you wire up the GLCD display. Hope this helps, thank you very much.